Hello, and welcome to another episode with Gardening for Beginners. Summer is officially here, and if you're in a zone similar to me, Zone 9A, you know that this time of year brings plenty of fruits, herbs, and vegetables to harvest. That being said, it also brings triple-digit temperatures and sometimes brutal sunlight. If you aren't careful, you may find that even your sun-loving plants, like tomatoes and peppers, quickly succumb to the bright rays of the sun, like you're seeing here with my Tabasco pepper and Boston pickling cucumber plants. In this video, we're going to show you how you can slow that process down and extend your summer growing season. So before we get started, I wanted to show you what I'm working with for this little experiment and do a tiny bit of bragging on my tomatoes. This section is a 20 by 4 foot raised bed containing yellow pear, red cherry, mortgage lifter, bull's heart, and purple Cherokee tomato varieties. I started them indoors from seed on February 7th and they've been outside since the third week of March. You can actually see their progress in three of our other videos. They are six steps to starting your very own vegetable garden, when to prune tomato suckers and flowers, and how to pollinate flowers by hand. I'll include links to those videos in the description. They're all so tiny, as little as six inches tall in the first video on starting your own vegetable garden, and now many of them are pushing seven feet tall. Seeing their progress and enjoying their harvest has been the most memorable part of this growing season so far which is all the more reason to want to extend it with shade cloth. I'm also working with this 8x4 foot raised bed containing my peppers and some flowers. Here you can really see the strength of the sun. It starts here and then gradually spreads out to also directly hit my tomatoes a few feet away. It's still early morning, but eventually the rays will become so overwhelming to the peppers that towards the middle of the day, the leaves begin to wilt. We can't have that. So you've seen my setups. Now let's take a look at the shade cloth. This first one is a six by 12 foot shade cloth made by Mr. Garden. It's 30% shade and is perfect for peppers and tomatoes alike. The dimensions are also appropriate for my raised bed with the peppers, so I'll be using it for that. This one also comes with these brackets you can use to secure the fabric, which you will need because on windy days it can free itself from a poorly secured setup. For the tomatoes, I'll be using a 6.5 by 16 foot shade cloth with 40% shade made by Gardening Will. That one is probably more appropriate for cucumbers and melons, but I'm thinking it'll be okay for my tomatoes. As far as the materials to secure the fabric, it's only limited by your imagination. In this video, we're going to use six six-foot tall bamboo poles for a more cost-effective option and these two by fours and one by sixes to show you a sturdier but also more expensive option. Again, these options are limitless and hopefully these two setups will help inspire you in creating yours. Here's my setup with the six foot tall bamboo poles. It may not look like it's filtering out a lot of the sun's rays, but it is. You can see how I've secured the shade cloth with the fasteners that came with the one that's 30% shade. Initially, I experimented using twine and the wind blowing under the cloth would pick it up off the bamboo and it would lay on my plants, which is no good. So I decided to stick with the fasteners. I've lifted the edge of the cloth up a bit so you can see the contrast of full sun versus 30% shade. Over a 6 to 8 hour time period, this shade can be the difference between your vegetables producing or dropping their flowers and burning up. Here's a good example of the wind picking the cloth up, but because it was secured well to the bamboo poles, it only lifted it up, but it stayed attached. Speaking of, let's talk pros and cons. It's definitely simple to set up and it's very cost effective. It maybe took me five minutes to set the whole thing up and only cost me about $20 for the poles and shade cloth. Both materials are also pretty durable, so I plan on being able to use them for a few seasons. That being said, it's pretty flimsy. 
and you have to check on it every day to make sure it's not falling or leaning, especially on days where it rains or is very windy. Here's the setup for my tomatoes with lumber and 40% shade cloth. We used nine two by fours and six or so one by sixes that we cut to what was needed. It's basically two separate supports and each one has three vertical two by fours with the one by sixes and other two by fours supporting it horizontally and then also at an angle from the other side of the bed. We used a combination of nails and in some spots twine to secure them. As far as pros and cons, they're pretty much the opposite of the bamboo pole setup. This one cost about $60 and took a couple hours with my dad's help to construct, but is a much more secure option. The only thing I really have to check is the cloth to make sure it's covering the tomatoes, and the only day I had to adjust it was after we experienced 55 mile per hour winds and heavy rain. Here's a view of the other side so you can get an idea of how it's set up on both sides. This side's main function is to support the other side as well as secure this side of the shade cloth. I also have nails on the sides of the supports here and there and we'll get into why in just a moment. I know it may look like these plants are already getting lots of shade and this time of day they are, but looks can be deceiving. In an hour or two, it's going to be just as sunny over here as it is with my peppers and this shade cloth will provide a welcome refuge for my tomatoes. Back over to what I've been calling the front of the structure, you can see how I secured the fasteners to the beams. Just a simple nail. I noticed it's loose on the nail, so I'm going to tuck some shade cloth over the nail to provide it some stability. It's been working great so far, but if I have problems, I'll go with a thicker nail with a wider head to prevent the fastener from falling off. I've noticed that the threading of the cloth is really durable and strong and doesn't seem to fray. Here's a spot where I hammered in a nail to use the beams as additional support for my plants. I've used some jute twine to wrap around low hanging branches and secured them to the nails. As you can see, I'm using multiple tie downs per nail. I plan to continue to add more nails on an as needed basis as my plants grow. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the benefits of shade cloth along with how you can use it. So do you have questions or maybe you have an effective way of using shade cloth that you can share with us in the comments. And if you liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.